So if there's one thing that I could teach somebody that's like, here's a concept for a troubleshooter, for somebody who's a technician. Now, people skills, you know, integrity, work ethic, those are things that are more important, but I'm not gonna teach most people that. You either pretty, were taught that by your parents or you're probably gonna have a hard time in life. But in terms of a technician, this is the concept that I wanna teach people. Start wide, go narrow, then go wide again. good technician goes into a house, the first thing they do is they start really wide. They don't jump into, oh, I bet it's the capacitor. I used to have this guy, his name was Jimmy, who I would ride with, and uh, he would guess what was going to be wrong at the next job before we got there. It was his favorite thing to do. I bet you this one's going to be whatever. And I bet you, you know, could guess that in many cases it was the thing that he guessed, even though it wasn't the thing that he guessed, if you know what I'm saying. So you want to go in with an open and very wide mind. And the first thing is to listen to the customer. Actually, before you even listen to the customer, you're listening to the equipment when you're walking up. How many times when you walk up to a house, will you notice the, oh, the condenser fan's running, but it's real quiet. Sure enough, compressor's not running. Could be failed run cap, could be a lot of things, right? Probably a failed run cap, because <laughs> that's what it seems to be a lot. But you're paying attention as you go in. Then you go in and you talk to the customer. So maybe it is that failed run cap. Maybe it is the backed up drain. Could be. I think your market's probably like ours. We probably have a ton of backed up drains when it's humid. Humid markets really struggle with that. But you go in, you talk to the customer. So what's it been doing? You're looking at the thermostat. You're paying attention. Hey, you know what? That thermostat, they got a new Nest thermostat on the wall. Huh. That wasn't here last time or whatever. Uh, yeah, so the customer, yeah, whatever. Uh, when did when did the, when did you get the new thermostat? The nice new thermostat here. Oh, yeah, my husband put that in. <laughs> Three weeks ago. He, he blew the fuse, but he figured it out. He put a new one in. Oh, we're going to check that fuse. <laughs> you know, you're paying attention to all those things. Chris Stevens, I don't know if you, any of you follow Chris Stevens' HVCR videos. He talks about big picture, being really big picture about things. That's where you start. But once you're big picture, once you've gone through and you've paid attention, I'm not saying, you know, check the, you know, I'm not saying not to check the filter. Check it. Now's the time to check it. Check the underside of that evaporator coil if you can get to it. Look at the condenser coil condition. Look for wire rub outs. Pay attention to the entire thing. Look at the install practices. You guys work on a lot of furnaces here. Venting. Pay attention to that water heater. Does it look like that sucker's been backdrafting? You got that, you know, that hood on the bottom. It's all, it's got a bunch of corrosion on it. Pay attention to that. You might save somebody's life or maybe not save their life, but keep them from getting sick. You know, maybe they've been having headaches for years. You know, heaven forbid. I've been, I've been very sleepy lately. Yeah, I bet you have. You're just paying attention to all that stuff. And then you go narrow. Now you find the problem. You've already looked at all the possibilities of everything around it. Now you find the thing that's keeping that piece of equipment from not working. And that's where a lot of, you know, a lot of people who are good at process people, good maintenance folks, they really struggle with this part. And they would do really well from focusing on the rest of the stuff we talked about. Understand the refrigerant circuit, understand the airflow side, understand the electrical side. Once you figure that out, now find the cause. Now here's a, here's a trick question. Because this is something I'd love to see more people do. Say you go to a system and it's four years old and you didn't install it. I'm just painting a picture here. It's not that this matters so much. It's four years old. You didn't install it. You show up, you test it, and it's got a grounded compressor. None of this is outside of the realm of possibility. This is the sort of call we run into all the time. What else do you check? So you know it's grounded. You've done the redneck test. It's, 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 it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's bad. We got a grounded compressor, right? You didn't just use the SUPCO thing and mash the button and it said bad. You know that it has failed. You did, you're a good diagnostician, you know. So what do you do to back back out again and go wide again before you leave? You can't test the thing until you get the compressor in it. Pay attention to airflow. Pay attention, I would go through, I'd go ahead and check your static pressure right now. You're not gonna, it's not gonna be exactly right because you don't have a wet coil, but you know, you can get a pretty good sense. Hey, if you got a true flow grid, use that sucker. That'd be great. You know, you're gonna get a really good, you're gonna know exactly what your airflow is. Look at your return size, look at your supply size. Yeah, pay attention to the things that look like the customer just did to the piece of equipment, like a, like a new air filter, that's a good one. Here's an interesting one. Why don't we, when we're there, let's say the system is seven years old, eight years old. Why don't we go ahead and weigh out the charge now? Does anybody ever do that? Ever thought about doing that? Why don't we? Now, this is assuming that you are coming back and doing the job. This is once you know that you're doing the job, right? But why don't we do that? Because you gotta pull the charge out anyway, right? It's coming out. Why don't we weigh it out? Because we would know something pretty, we would know some pretty interesting things about that system if we weighed it out. What if we weighed it out and the system charge on the data plate was six pounds and we weigh out 12? Do you think that doesn't happen? 
It happens all the time. I had one the other day. I have a young installer, great guy, an amazing young man, went to his system. He was having a heck of a time with it. He was having all kinds of issues. And we went out on a ductless system that he installed. And we weighed 21 pounds of our 410A out of that system. And I said, Aaron, Aaron like what? Like what was going on there? He's like, well, it just kept going in. The pressures weren't where they were supposed to be. I'm like, that's not how that works. Like we've, we've had this conversation, but it, trust me from now on, he uses a scale. I'm like, hey, if you go in and you know, like you've looked at the line set length and all that, and you put more than a couple ounces more than is on that chart, and your pressure still ain't where they're supposed to be, go ahead and stop, you know? If you've got a system that's got way too much charge in it, there's a very good chance that system has a restriction, a metering device issue, or likely an airflow problem because somebody was putting refrigerant in there, why? Because my pressures ain't where they're supposed to be. And what do they specifically mean by that? My suction pressure isn't high enough. That's what they mean, because they learned very early on that if you don't get your suction pressure high enough, what happens? The evaporator coil freezes up, and that is very inconvenient because the customer notices that and you gotta keep going back, right? So you get your suction pressure up where it's supposed to be so that way you can go home. But that's not how that works, obviously. So that's one thing. What if, we, what if it's a system that's supposed to hold five pounds or six pounds on the data tag and we've only pulled two pounds out of it? Okay. Could that cause a compressor failure? Yep. Both of those things, low airflow, overcharge, can those cause a compressor failure? Yep. Can undercharge cause a compressor failure? Yep. Wouldn't it be nice to know if you have an evap coil leak now, then later, when you go back and you try to pull the vacuum and it's not pulling down, and then you just send it, and then you have to go back three weeks later? This sort of stuff happens all the time. And it's also, you know, this is a time-saving thing you can do right now. A technician, you're the troubleshooting tech, customer confirm, you have need a compressor, it's warranty, whatever. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the charge out now, just make sure it is, okay, it's right where it should be. I've eliminated that, I've looked at airflow, I paid attention to that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and replace the start gear too. Now, if you're in commercial, that would mean always replacing the contactor as well, because single phasing is such a problem in commercial. And residential, do I care if you replace the contactor or not? I don't care that much, it's cheap. As long as you wire it right, I'm fine with it. I actually worry sometimes about putting a new contactor in because you know might put a two pole in place of a one plus, and now your uh, now your crank AC is not working or whatever. You know, so it kind of it kind of concerns me a little bit. But you know, if you want to make you know make sure you're putting in the right capacitor that goes with the new compressor because it isn't always the same. That's another thing to watch for. So putting putting in new start gear, you're paying attention. Oh hey, this has got an 80 foot line set. This falls under the long line guidelines. Let's look that up. Oh. This system is supposed to have a crankcase heater and it doesn't have one. Could that cause a compressor to fail? Sure, you get what I'm saying? How often do we take it to this nth degree to make sure that this compressor is not gonna fail with all the things we can do before we even fire it on the first time? Before we wire it up and fire it up. I just like to say that as much as I can because it's my favorite line. Wire it up and fire it up. Before we do that, we do everything we can and then you run test it. Not the old, well, I'm gonna have to run test it before I can see if anything else is wrong. There's a lot of things you can do before to see if anything else is wrong before you start to run test it. And my encouragement is just do it. We get in this mindset where let's say some version of, well, my boss isn't gonna put up with that. Your boss is probably a decent person who, he's not, okay, <laughs> all right, well, I'm not gonna tell him you said that, geez. Your boss is probably, I said probably, a decent person who's probably been kicked in the teeth by life like many of us have, who's probably trying to figure out how to make a profit and who's probably struggling. Unless you work for one of these you know, white shirt companies where you got the American flag patch on the arm and your whole job is to sell, which I doubt it's any of you here because why would you be coming to my class because you don't listen to my podcast if that's the case. Unless you're spying. Are you the spy, Tony? You kind of look like a spy. And by that, I mean you look a little too good. That's what I was going for there, just, just so you know. Okay, all right. If that's the case, you're working for somebody who cares about getting it right, then they're going to learn pretty quickly that you're reducing callbacks, you're reducing issues by being thorough. What I'm not saying is be the old time technician who gets so grouchy and so beat up that you're dragging everywhere you go. You're saying, I just, I just work smarter, not harder. Here we go. I'm gonna get there someday, you know? That's not what I'm saying. Cause you, we, we've all known that guy too, who's actually got a good mind, um, but who has kind of given up on <laughs> the whole thing. And so that's, that's not it. But you're being efficient with your time. You're not breaking your back. You're just being thoughtful and saying, we're gonna make sure that we're gonna prevent all of these problems. And we're gonna charge along the way. Cause that's the other side of all of this. When you talk about being this level of thorough, you gotta charge for what you do. You, you shouldn't be the cheapest. If you are the cheapest, well, why are you doing that? You shouldn't be in this room caring as much clearly as you do to be here on a Friday and not be 
like charging good money. Your doctor makes good money. Your dentist makes good money. The lawyer makes good money. All those people make good money. You should be making good money. Not because you're selling everybody a piece of equipment and not because you're slapping a indoor air quality product in every house and not because you're selling a maintenance contract in every job you go to. Although it's fine in some cases if you're doing those things where appropriate. It's you should make good money because you're good at your job and you're doing the stuff we're talking about here. And those are the types of, if you work for, currently work for a company that doesn't buy some of the stuff that I'm saying. I'm not saying they have to buy all of it because I could be wrong about some of it. I may be telling you some stupid stuff. You know, Bert tells me all the time this stuff I come up with is stupid and he's probably right, but he's also a little stupid too. You all know that if you've seen the videos. But you know, being thorough like this was just gonna save everybody a lot of money. It's gonna make for happy customers. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.